Zion podcast where we are rediscovering the ancient way and today we're doing it in an audio only version. Thank you for tuning in to listen today. Time allows for an audio recording while I'm driving today so that is what we will do. Listen, I just want to get right to the point. I'm just thinking this this morning as I'm driving out. I'm just having my daily repentance to the Father for just my just for the rebellion that's still yet in my heart and in my motives. Just the selfishness and depravity of the of the flesh man taint that remains in me that I will be dealing with and 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 laying to the side for the rest of my days, I believe. Hopefully in in incrementally smaller measure as I continue to age and mature spiritually speaking and in the natural that the flesh man part of me will will continue to be placed on the altar before the father and burned <laughs> a pleasing aroma a living sacrifice reality that that I get more and more into the likeness and image of Yeshua the Son. But this morning while I'm praying, and I just thought I'd turn this on and share this, is as I'm just talking to the Father about just my my constant wrestling with with natural minded thinking, just my carnality, the the strength and the prowess of my flesh man that, that sometimes is just so demanding whether it's my belly or my imagination or whatever it may be for you or for me whatever we feel like is a is a constant wrestling in different increments in different seasons of our life sometimes man it's just easy <laughs> sometimes it's just like breathing obedience Sometimes, as children, our will is strong and resists the Father's will for us. To be spiritual men, to walk in the likeness and image of the Son. And that's what I want to talk about for just a few moments, is the beautiful image and likeness of Yeshua the Son. As I'm praying this morning, and and I'm just... How we pray is is different. How we all pray, who we talk to, how we perceive praying, what are we doing? Who are we talking to? Are we talking to the Father? Can we talk to the Son? Can we communicate with Holy Spirit? I mean, we can make things so complicated, we just fold our arms and perhaps throw them up in the air. Say, oh, I don't even know who I'm talking to. For any one of us who have gone beyond just the the age-old prayer to Heavenly Father or Lord. But if we want to be specific, this does take some some thinking through. <laughs> but that's not what I want to talk about today. As I'm as I'm communing with the Father, and I just in my heart and in my mind, I'm just I'm asking Yeshua to to just be his his beautiful. His beautiful self, the beautiful mediator reality in my life. For many years now, I never feel compelled to rightly pray that, you know, God would just supernaturally give me the ability to be an overcomer or give me the ability to say no to sin. Because the reality is, if I really believe in what I say I believe as far as what regeneration and salvation even is, salvation is, of course, uh, uh, something that is in my my future, a yet-to-be-obtained reality. It is, it is for me if I endure to the end. I am being saved, and it's yet to be determined if I will ultimately receive salvation. But I have been regenerated. I am a new creation. I have been moved from the, from the lineage of first Adam into the last. I have. My identity has changed. And as I say on here often, 
I'm now in a different bloodline. I'm in a different lineage now in Messiah. The offspring of Yahweh Elohim through the beautiful invitation of the Son. But as I'm communing with him this morning, I'm just saying, Yeshua, just literally to, to try to basically quote what I've just been praying. How did you do it? <laughs> How did you do it, Yeshua? How in the world, as one fully God but equally fully man, how in the world did you walk out an entire life free from sin? Now, what is sin? Sin is breaking the commands of the Father. Rebellion. Disobedience. Well, disobedience to what? <laughs> and this is what the mainstream Christian church could really use a heavy dose of, of discussion about is, well, what is sin? Well, sin is breaking the Ten Commandments. Well, okay, but that takes some that takes some understanding. That takes some explaining. Like we talk about with regularity, well, what about the Fourth Commandment? If we regularly gather on a Sunday and Sunday is in our minds what we have adopted from the Catholic Church of being the Lord's Day, the Lord's, that's our Sabbath rest day now? Or if we do not remember the Sabbath, if we have, whether intentionally or in ignorance, like I did for my whole life, ignored the fourth commandment? Am I, am I in sin then? Am I in rebellion then? Well, no, we don't. We don't do that. Do you see what the, the the challenging part of this is? And I'll interject this. There's this song that we've been listening to a lot lately, and it's, man, it's just this, like this anthem. It's kind of heavy, and it's this lady singing in Hebrew, and she says, Arise, Yah, against your enemies. And friends, I'm telling you, every time I, every time I sing that song, I look at my own heart. <laughs> I look at my own heart. I look at my own intentions. I don't think of Islam or, you know, whatever else we would imagine as enemies and how, how the evangelical church talks about the Democratic Party being the enemy of God or, or this person or this movement. Planned Parenthood is the evil enemy. Friends, what about ourselves? What if that's me? What if it's you? Because again, the enemies of Yahweh Elohim are those who, who detest His ways and won't kneel in humility before His commands. That's the anti-Messiah, friends. And that's why this makes sense in the context as I'm saying it out of my own mouth. I'm like, that's why this all matters because... Anti-Messiah is the opposite of what Yeshua Messiah demonstrated, which is what? Perfectly keeping the ways and commands of his Father by choice, by will, deliberate. Not just because he was the God-man and it was just the fruit of being Emmanuel, no. Fully God, fully deity, and fully man lowered himself be to become as you and I in order to experience the depravity of flesh and overcome it via keeping the ways, laws, commands of his Father to perfection. And so what is anti-Messiah? If we can just stay in that vein of thought for just a moment. Anyone who does not function as Messiah and walks out their own will, their own way, instead of his. And what was his way, friends? What was his way? Perfectly pleasing the Father. And we have to understand that when we use our Christianese verbiage like, well, he never sinned. Yeshua was free. Jesus was free from sin. Okay, well, what is sin? Breaking the laws and commands of the Father. We don't talk about that simple baseline elementary principle of what sin 
even is. Sin is disobedience. It's not that complicated. Disobeying. Well, what are you disobeying? (laughs) And the problem is we have remained so ignorant, myself included, to what the Father has put out before me to keep, to remember, and to covenantally adhere to. I'm in ignorance, a lawbreaker, disobedient, not knowing the laws of the kingdom that I have I have joyfully entered into <laughs> and talk about with great regularity. The church does that as well. The body of Christ. Well, what is the body of Christ? She is a, a city on a hill who is governed by a, a system and a kingdom that is not of this world. Governed by the perfect ways of the king, the father himself lays down the absolute governmental kingdom rules and regulations, and he alone calls the shots. We talked about this in our house just this morning. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 2. All of man's ways are right in his own eyes, but Yahweh weighs the spirits of men. I talked about this on the whiteboard teaching just a couple days ago online. Everybody believes they're right in their own in their own eyes. That's easy. <laughs> Everyone thinks they're right. Their own opinions, even their own doctrines. Of course that's right. I've studied that, you know. <laughs> I've got that doctrine mastered. I have such clarity and understanding towards baptism or tongues or salvation. New Covenant, Old Covenant. I've got all that down. (laughs) Friends, we know little. We know little and we have to be careful that in our own eyes, how we see ourselves according to our own vantage point is just placed in humility before the Father and say, you know what, I don't know squat. In comparison, by comparison to to the perfect ways of the King of all kings, Man, I just, I've got nowhere. And in many ways, I'm just ignorantly lawless. And friends, that's the warning of the age that's to come, is that lawlessness will will overtake the world. And friends, what is lawlessness? It's not the evil, wretched, sinful, fallen, democratic world. (laughs) Abortionists. Friends, it's all of us. It's all of us if we're not careful to constantly study the scriptures and know what is and what is not the law of Yahweh Elohim. It's of utmost importance. Way more important than evangelism. Way more important than than a Bible study alone by itself. Attending Bible studies or Sunday school or church services. We have got to give ourselves to make sure we are not lawless people. If the elect will be led astray, and what will they be led astray unto? Lawlessness. Their own ways. Seeking out what is right in their own eyes. Instead of in humility admitting that maybe sometimes we just don't know. And that to go back to my point just a few moments ago about that song, you arise, Yah, against your enemies. I just, I even wrote a note this morning to myself saying, when we rush to cry out for Yahweh to execute justice against his enemies, perhaps instead we should take that time to make sure that that in fact is not us. Because what is the enemy? Who is the enemy of Yahweh Elohim? anti-messiah those who are walking out their own will their own ways their own ideas according to their own vantage point of what is to be done and what is not now there is grace there is mercy because if there's not none of us have a chance because we're not talking about being perfect law keepers and if we're not in absolute perfection we have no chance i'm not saying that But what I am saying is there has got to be an insatiable drive within us to be found pleasing in the eyes of the Father 
Which brings us back to our main point this morning. Like Messiah. Like Yeshua himself. Who had an insatiable desire. So much so that every time he saw any other thing. I believe he saw it placed right beside the will of the Father. Anything in his natural carnal side. His, his man side. His humanity. Because he was tempted in every single way that we are, yet he was found without sin, without disobedience, without law-breaking, without disobedience to his father. He was deemed what? Well-pleasing, right, pure, undefiled. And so that's why when I was crying out to him in my prayer time this morning, just saying, Yeshua, how did you do it? We're not talking like biblically or doctrinally. I know how. I know <laughs> I know the 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 textbook answer. I know that, but I mean just as a as a man, how in the world did you live out 30 years of life as a human being and constantly say no to the invitation and temptation of the flesh man. How in the world did you do that? And praise the Father. This is the beautiful reality of New Covenant. This is the New Covenant reality. And I've been starting to insert that into these these programs as of late as it kind of expands in my understanding and present moment um, vantage point, if you will, to what New Covenant even is. And again, in New Covenant, all that that is, and I use that very tenderly. I don't mean to lessen it in any way, and I'm not doing that to be clear. But the same Torah that we're told in in Jeremiah, that the same Torah that was written upon tablets of stone was prophesied to be moved onto the hearts of men. And so in Yeshua Messiah, friends, we've been invited into the Ezekiel heart exchange reality where the heart that that was hard as stone and could not be written upon by the beautiful finger and hand of Yahweh Elohim, the, his, his wonderful ways and law, through Yeshua Messiah has now been, we've had this heart surgery where by his wonderful act of denying himself, and fulfilling every single thing required for humanity as last Adam to now invite us into his bloodline lineage to what? To be born again, regenerated, and given a heart of flesh that can contain the beautiful law of Yahweh Elohim now. Through the blood of the Son and the model, the hupogromos model that we see in Greek in the New Testament of the carved out way where the Son has already gone before us to be a literal living demonstration of walking perfectly with the Father in flesh and bone. Something our first father, Adam, could not do. Well, he did not do. He could have. He, like us, in free will, chose disobedience and chose to fall. But in Yeshua Messiah, we no longer have to be that man. We have been invited into going to him, the mediator Messiah, to cry out and say, show me the way to walk. Why? (laughs) Because he perfectly walked the will and way of his father. And so now, in the beautiful new covenant reality, fueled by Holy Spirit now to carry out the ways of the father, we can be just like Yeshua perfectly pleasing in the eyes of my father 24-7 if 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 I choose his ways if I yield my will if I deny myself and every other temptation that makes me myself an anti-messiah a lawless one one who breaks the covenant and is thereby (sighs) I'm not on the outside like kicked out but but I'm I'm not in the beautiful covenantal covering that we see throughout Psalms and so many other places about what is for the just what is for the upright 
and when I'm not, and when I'm unfaithful, and when I am the one who who acts in ignorance and in in hard heartedness operates by the lusts of my flesh and I choose the flesh man over the spirit there's mercy and there's grace because the father looks at his creation and as we talked about in recent episodes I believe even the last one of the beautiful unrelenting love of my father how we looked at how the the biblical pattern then we'll bring today to a close the beautiful biblical pattern that that father looks at his creation and he says, man, I can't do this anymore. They are a lawless, rebellious people. No matter what I do for them, no matter how much I covenantally join myself with them, they kick against me and hate my ways. I'm leaving them. I can't do this anymore. And then time after time after time after time, For the people of God, and in my own individual life, I've seen this pattern. He comes back to me. He comes back to his people, and he says, My overwhelming love compels me to return. To again extend myself in mercy and compassion and kindness to see their weak, weak ways and extend to them forgiveness. Extend to them a way back. And friends, just like, just like Cain, just like Cain in the killing of his brother, how we see in the scriptures the, the invitation to even Cain, the first one to spill blood on the earth in the manner of murder, rising up and killing his own brother. The second generation of humanity on the earth as we know it, rising up and killing his own brother. Even then, Yahweh, in his goodness and kindness, said, Oh, Cain, if only you would have lifted your countenance and turned to me, son. If only you would have come to me instead of turned away and hardening your heart. I would have received you back. And friend, that's the, that's the soberness of our own lives. And that's the key. That's the key. Is for us to lift our faces. Lift our eyes in our shame. In our disobedience. In our rebellion. And just look to the Father and say. I've turned my back on you. Would you please receive me back. For the four millionth time. Oh great Father. Because just like the prodigal son story, just like the account of the son who one moment was wallowing in the mud, eating beside beside the unclean pig, the ultimate picture of just sin and depravity and, and uncleanness. He says, what am I doing? I have a father who loves me and has made a place for me to live beside him in his house, I'm going back. And friends, what did the Father do? We've so abused these accounts, these biblical stories, but the beauty of the Father running out to meet him. Running out to meet him outside, away from the house, so to spare the Son the shame of his of his condition and his nasty, disgusting condition, the father runs out to meet him. He says, son, come home. Come home. So friends, if that's you, I'm not talking about the old school verbiage of being backslidden. I'm just talking about our ongoing wrestling of anything in our hearts that the Holy Spirit would reveal and bring to the forefront that says, you know what, you've got to deal with this. And the only way to deal with it is to just open up your heart and let the light of the sun shine upon it and reveal whatever depravity is in us all and say, Father, here I am. Again, whether it's something new for the very first time or it's something that we have lost count because it's been going on for all of our days, here I am. Here I am again. And 
And to close out with with my main point, we have a mediator, a mediator Messiah, and he is ready and waiting to fulfill his present function, which is to reveal us to the Father and to present us washed in his blood, in his identity, in his lineage, and say, Father, they know not what they do. And when they do know what they do, Father, show them mercy. Show them compassion. We could, man, we could spend all morning talking about the imagery of Moses and his Messiah-esque qualities. How many times did Moses literally stand? He, he, I see him stepping out in front of the people saying, No, 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 Yahweh, don't. Don't do it. Don't lay them out. <laughs> don't do it. Have mercy on your creation. Have mercy on your people, O great Yahweh Elohim. And time and time again we see Yahweh relent and turn away from his anger. So friends, let us not abuse that beautiful gift. Let us not abuse that. I often do. I still do. So let us turn from our wicked ways today. Let us lift up our hands consecrate ourselves turn 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 away from and unto our beautiful wonderful father who wants to receive us and hold us and teach us his ways so that we too can be told well done well done you walked in the likeness and the image of my son yeshua messiah You've been listening to the Path to Zion podcast, where we are rediscovering the ancient way. Find us online at pathtozion.com or, of course, over on YouTube, where we have a bunch of videos online for you to watch and, and glean from, should you be interested. Reach out to us at pathtozionpodcast at gmail.com if you would like to share anything that the Father's telling you about what you hear on here or just what you're hearing in general. Corrections, challenges encouraging words, whatever it is. Thank you for those of you who reach out and email us. It blesses us greatly. You want to be a part of the program? Let us know. There's always things we can add equipment-wise and, and, and how to promote videos and that sort of thing that we do. If you want to be a part of it, just let us know. We thank you for those of you who have done that and are doing that with regularity. We are blessed beyond measure to have anyone at all listening, so we're thankful for that. Let us find the ancient way. And let us leave behind everything that this world has to offer because there is a price to be paid. Amen.